When dealing with a drivability issue, whether you have a code or you don't have a code, you have to remember the four foundational pillars. The first is can the engine seal and compress the air fuel charge? And number two is can the engine breathe? Can it get the air in and can it get it back out again? Number three, ignition. Does it have a good strong spark and is it delivered at the right time? And finally, fuel. Is it getting the right quantity of fuel into the combustion chamber in the way and manner that it should be delivered? What do you say on today's tech tip? We focus on the first two. Today's edition of Tech Tip is brought to you by Snap-on. Snap-on has long been a leader in diagnostic tools and equipment. Learn more by visiting www.snapon.com. For an engine to run efficiently, the first thing that has to happen is air has to be able to get in with no restrictions other than the ones we place on it through the throttle plate. Once there, the engine has to be able to seal the combustion chamber and then compress that air charge with the fuel added so it can properly combust. After that combustion process, the engine now has to dispel those spent gases and it has to do it easily and efficiently, again, without any restriction. Using the new Snap-on Zeus Plus is going to make testing these two key foundational pillars very easy. So let's start with checking the ability of the engine to seal and compress. There are a number of ways I can approach this problem and probably the one you're most familiar with is using a mechanical compression gauge, maybe even a cylinder leak down tester to gauge the condition of the engine. And that's all fine and good, but those are often time consuming and I'd just rather not spend a lot of time doing it if I can help it. So I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I'm going to use the Snap-on scope module to help me perform these tests. Now, some of you who use Snap-on may go, what's that you got in your hand, Pete? Well, like I said, this is part of the Zeus Plus, the newest addition to the Snap-on diagnostic tool line. And one of the changes that they made was making the scope module an individual component, which makes it a lot easier to use. There's a lot of other features in the Zeus Plus I encourage you to go to the Snap-on website and check it out. Now, let's get to testing. The easiest test to make to gauge the overall condition of the engine mechanically is called a relative compression test. It uses a scope to monitor either starter current draw changes or voltage drop changes at the battery caused by each piston moving through TDC compression. The easiest method is to connect your scope to the battery as you would your DVOM or digital multimeter. Set the voltage base to show a total of 20 volts on the x-axis and set the time base to show a total of 5 seconds on the y-axis. Set your trigger using a falling slope and a voltage level of close to 12 volts. With the scope connected, crank the engine over while holding the throttle to the floor. you should see a pattern similar to this one. Look for similar drops across the pattern. Any drop that is noticeably less than the others indicates a cylinder that isn't performing as it should. On many vehicles, when you hold the accelerator pedal to the floor, it puts the vehicle into what's called clear flood mode and allows you to crank the engine without it starting. Now, if the model that you're working on doesn't have this feature, make sure that you disable the fuel system so the engine will not start. If you disable the ignition system alone and leave the fuel system operational, you could wash down the cylinders with raw gas. 
You can get an even closer look if you take advantage of one of the scope's features. It's called AC coupling. By selecting this mode when you're setting up the channel, you remove the DC voltage component and leave just the AC behind. What does that mean for us? Well, I'm not really caring about how much voltage I'm measuring. I'm looking at the changes, aren't I? So this will take all of that measurement port out and just leave me the changes. And that gives me a much clearer picture of where that weak cylinder might be. To use these features, just go back into the trace settings menu, tick off the AC coupling box, and change the voltage range from 20 volts to 2 volts. When you're looking at this pattern, you may see a few anomalies point out. Maybe something's a little deeper, not as deep, but it happens occasionally. Don't pay any attention to those. What you want to focus on is the repetitive. If you see one that's not going as low as the others and it's keeping up with the, say, the number of cylinders in the engine, what I mean by that is every, on a four cylinder engine like this one, every fourth drop is not as deep as the others. Well, that indicates that one of the cylinders may have an issue. Now, how do you identify which cylinder it is? Well, that's easy. Take a second channel on the scope and tie it to an ignition reference. You can pick whatever coil is easiest to get to, and that's going to overlay the ignition event on top of your pattern. Now, the one that it syncs with, of course, is the one that you're connected to. From there, just use the firing order to determine which one has the problem. If I don't see any problems in the pattern, then I'm 95% sure that I don't have any sealing or compression issues with the engine. I say 95% because there are two areas where this test is not going to be of use. First, remember that this is a relative compression test and it's relative to all of the cylinders to each other. So if I have a cam timing issue that's affecting the compression in all the cylinders at the same time, the pattern I see is going to look okay. What's the real difference though that you can look for? The peak, the amplitude, high and low, is going to be less on an engine that has an overall lower compression rate as one that's healthy and has a normal compression rate. How are you going to know that? You've got to do these tests on a lot of known good cars. Don't wait for that broken one to come into your shop before you try these tests. Uh, the second issue that you're not going to catch with a relative compression test unless you're really, really lucky, and that's the case of an intermittent seal, a more and more common problem when it comes to sealing and compression, typically caused by carbon buildup, especially in GDI engines. And if I'm convinced that I really don't have an issue mechanically, well now it's time to move on to the next topic, and that's the engine's ability to breathe. Can the engine get the air in it's supposed to and out again? without any restrictions. It's called volumetric efficiency, and there are a number of ways that you can perform this test. Probably the easiest is to take a test drive while monitoring and recording the absolute and calculated load data PIDs on your scan tool. Simply find a safe place to perform this test, and one where it's legal. Start off at a rolling first gear start while recording the data, and smash the pedal to the floor. Keep it there until you hit that second gear shift, then back off, stop your recording, take it back to the shop, and analyze the data. Again, there are more precise ways to perform this test, but generally speaking, if I see a calculated load dipping below 70, 75%, that's going to catch my attention. Hey, a little tip for you. If the engine is equipped with a mass airflow sensor, take a look at the fuel trims at the same time. If the fuel trims are normal and you're showing a low load number, well then you can be pretty assured that there is indeed a breathing problem. If you see changes in fuel trim, typically correcting for a lean condition, well you may want to take a strong look at that MAF sensor to make sure that it's telling the ECM the truth. And if you determine that it is indeed a breathing issue, where do you go looking? Well the obvious comes to mind, anything from a clogged air filter to a clogged catalytic converter but anything in between can also cause that issue. A worn cam lobe, a cam that's out of timing, and others. You really have to keep your suspect list pretty wide open. Don't ever assume that it can't be something until you've proven 
that it can't be that something. If you do think you have a breathing issue or maybe you're not 100% sure on that sealing and compression issue, there is a test that you can make that is very accurate and very helpful. It's called the end cylinder pressure test. It uses something called a pressure transducer and allows us to connect the transducer to the engine via the spark plug hole, start the engine, and use our scope to monitor the pressure changes over the entire 720 degree four stroke cycle. This helps us determine peak uh, compression pressures, uh, intake and exhaust valve openings and closings, uh, exhaust restrictions, VVT actuations, a lot of information in other words. And I certainly can't do it justice in today's video, but let's take a look at the basics and some of the fundamental parts of the waveform to help you get started in learning this new diagnostic technique. To perform this test, we're going to use two additional scope accessories, the pressure adapter and the pressure transducer. We begin by attaching the scope module to the scan tool as we did earlier. Next, we'll attach the pressure adapter to the scope module. And finally, we'll attach the pressure transducers to the pressure adapter. In this case, we're going to be using the green and red traces, so we'll turn the yellow one off for now. Then we'll open up the trace menus for these two channels and select the preset menu for the transducers that we're using. As for the time base, I'd like to use a 200 millisecond sweep that's about the amount of time it takes for a cylinder to go through its complete cycle at idle. With the engine at operating temperature and the transducers in place, start the engine and capture the data. It should look something like this. Let's take a look at the basic elements of this pattern. So let's just start looking at this pattern by starting on the left. You can see the pressure begins to rise as the piston nears top dead center of its compression stroke. Now in our capture, there is no combustion event. So as we pass TDC and start wicking our way back down on what would be the power stroke, well, let's refer to that as the decompression stroke. Here you can see that again, the pressure begins to drop as the cylinder volume increases on its way to bottom dead center. But what happens near bottom to center of the decompression or power stroke? The exhaust valve begins to open, doesn't it? And you can see that ramp up as now the sensor pressure is exposed or the cylinder pressure is exposed to the pressure in the exhaust manifold. Do you think we could measure back pressure in this area? You sure can. And we also know when the exhaust valve opened, don't we? Absolutely. Now we're moving towards TDC of the exhaust stroke. And what happens just before we get there? The intake valve opens, and it's a period we call overlap, where both the intake and exhaust valve are open at the same time. Now because of this, we can't get a real distinction of when the intake valve actually opened, but we do know when the exhaust valve closes. And that can also help us get an indication of is the intake valve timing correct? Finally, we're going to continue on our way now down on the intake stroke. And as we near TDC there, we're going to close that intake valve, sealing the chamber, and begin our way back up again on the compression stroke. Now, this is just a real quick overview of the elements of this pattern. There's so much more that you can learn by looking at what you see here on the screen. You can assess intake valve opening and closing. Is there a problem with cam lobe wear? valve adjustment, VVT actuation, and so much more. So I encourage you to learn more about it. Now don't rely just on that single capture to do all of your diagnostic work for you. Yeah, something might stand out and just be really apparent. That's, that's one thing, but that's not always the case. It's always a good idea to at least compare that suspect cylinder to one that's known good. And if the engine has multiple banks, certainly you want to compare bank to bank as well. Ideally, you'll take a capture of each cylinder 
so that you have the data for all of them to review. If you'd like more information on the brand new Zeus Plus or any of the other tools that I shared with you today, please visit www.snapon.com forward slash en forward slash us forward slash diagnostics. And as always, thanks for watching.